Hello everybody, welcome to this live stream. Um, today I'm surrounded by clouds, so I can't really go out and do astrophotography. So I thought the second best thing to do would be to um, process some images. Uh, I've been using this software called Cyril for uh, some time now. I've got many videos on it. And I thought today I will uh, show you what I usually do um, as I begin uh, editing or processing my photos. Uh, today we'll be processing uh, the Lagoon Nebula. Um, uh, this uh, I'll be using free data from uh, Cyril, uh, and I'm just going to show you what I usually do. And uh, um, yeah, hopefully it's helpful to someone somewhere. Uh, well, let's begin by opening the photo. So I've got a stacked file already. Um, I'm just going to pull that up now. Uh, and this is how it should look. It's all dark and uh, you can hardly make out any details. And um, uh, most of the time that's how your stacked file will look. Uh, you can use Cyril to do stacking as well and I've got a video on that. Uh, or you can do it with Deep Sky Stacker or other software, uh, whatever you prefer. Um, so the first thing I always do is uh, change the linear mode to auto stretch mode. Uh, that's bottom right. Uh, what this does is that it shows you how this image will look like if it was auto stretched. It doesn't perform an auto stretch uh, right at this moment, but it shows you if uh, if it did. Uh, and as you can see, there's a lot of good good data here. Uh, we can see the Lagoon Nebula uh, very clearly, and uh, um, yeah, it, it looks uh, nice to me. Um, let me show you the how it looks like in RGB, and you can see the green. Uh, tint. Uh, we'll get rid of that later but uh, for now um, we the first thing we'll do is uh, crop the image because the edges of the image often have artifacts that are um, not useful and can cause uh, um, um, confusion for the software. Uh, once uh, that is done, cropping is done, uh, I usually, uh, next what I usually do is um, go to background extraction. So to do that, go to image processing, uh, background extraction, and I would usually cl uh, click generate. Now these red boxes will appear. Uh, uh, what you want to make sure in this step is that uh, none of the red boxes are on the parts where nebula uh, is. Um, so I will delete um, anything that, any block that has uh, nebula bits on it. Um, so don't, but you don't have to be, um, you know, uh, crazy about this, just uh, a few deleting few boxes would do. Uh, once you are satisfied with it, uh, you click Compute Background. And that's what we get. Uh, so the background has been extracted. So you click Apply and Close. Um, now this is how it's looking at this moment and uh, it's uh, as you can see the thing the image is coming together um, next uh, we want to correct the color uh, of this image and to do that go to image processing color collaboration uh, photo match color collaboration uh, and here we want to uh, type M8 uh, that's the Lagoon Nebula um, by the way, um, this photometric color collaboration works only uh, when you have the internet. If you don't have internet, then this uh, feature might not work. Uh, once you are um, um, 
yeah, you uh, have searched the object, uh, go to um, Lagoon Nebula, hopefully it will appear here, and then uh, we, um, what we usually want to do is to make sure that the focal distance and pixel size is correct, because if it's not correct, this tool will uh, not be accurate or probably fail to plate solve. So uh, you can often get data from your image by clicking this image, but cl clicking this button. But for me, it's uh, today it's not working. That's okay. Um, I know that uh, the focal length is probably 388, and uh, uh, pixel size is correct. So for you, it might be different. For you, it might be you know 700 uh, focal length or. Uh, 500 or any of that just uh, make sure that the focal distance is right and your pixel size um, is right as well and you can get this information about pixel size on the internet uh, just type in your camera um, uh, model and uh, it uh, usually in the specs um, they have pixel size um, that you can copy paste from so uh, what we do next is uh, I usually don't touch these things I uh, unless uh, it's not pla plate solving then I usually choose down sample image uh, but let's have a look to see if it plate solves now this step can take uh, a few minutes depending on your computer um, uh, re recently they've updated Cyril uh, I think recent update has made this faster so make sure you have updated your Cyril. Um, you can see in the progress bar down there um, um, voila done. Uh, it has performed uh, uh, color collaboration. Um, next what I like to do is go to deconvolution. So go to image processing and uh, deconvolution. Um, now this this what it does is it sharpens the image, uh, as you can see. Uh, let me show you the preview. Um, yep, uh, and it pops the detail. So uh, it depends on. Um, how sharp you want it or um, yeah it's really your choice but what I like to do is uh, I just like to get some uh, smidgen of sharpening going um, because I feel like it can it has the potential to ruin the image and I don't want that uh, I, I'm happy with that uh, so apply um, now, next, what I usually do is uh, I take this auto stretch off uh, and go back to the linear mode. Uh, and then I perform uh, auto stretch or histogram, histogram transformation. And uh, to do that, uh, go to image processing, histogram transformation. Um, and I know people do it differently. There are many methods, so there's no one right way to do this. But uh, I usually like to do auto stretch to begin with, uh, and then I fine tune. So as you can see, this has auto stretch the image. I click apply, and I go back again to histogram transformation, and just make fine adjustments. Uh, this histogram auto stretch can be a bit aggressive at times, so uh, I like to dial it back a little bit if I can. Um, yeah, I am happy with that. Um, excellent. Next, what I like to do is uh, uh, just dial up a bit of saturation. So for that, you go to uh, image processing, color saturation. Uh, Cyril has an excellent uh, color saturation tool. So, you know, you can actually uh, choose different colors to uh, saturate. So for example, you can, uh, let's uh, turn up the blue just to, just to show you. Uh, 
it will only um, dial up the blue channel as you can as you can see the the difference um, but I want to do this on global scale so um, sorry I shouldn't be doing that um, go to saturation and I would like to now this depends on you know your choice really how much saturation you would like um, I like uh, fairly reddish images so uh, I am I think I'm happy it's somewhere around there but again this this depends on people and there is no um, rule about this uh, that you must have that amount of saturation um, so look you can always uh, by the way all the tools I think have this button preview button so you can look to see what is happening if there is any uh, difference if so what um, well, there you go I think I am happy with this image um, you can uh, rotate the orientation of it if you wanted to uh, uh, but I'm uh, oh, this looks good um, yeah anyways uh, this looks good to me um, I'm sure there's many things you can still do to this image uh, in Photoshop you could uh, uh, reduce the star size you can uh, you know reduce noise and all of that but uh, that's that's um, you know you can do that but I don't um, feel there's a special need for that particularly for this particular photo but um, um, yeah, I hope you found this helpful. Uh, if you if, if you did, uh, please subscribe and uh, like. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, write it below, and I will uh, get back to you as soon as I can. Um, as I said, Cyril is a powerful software, uh, and it's been up it's being updated, so um, I feel that. Uh, uh, for people who are on budget, uh, people who don't have pics in sight, uh, they, I think, can use this software well. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. <laughs> Bye for now.